There are a lot of pop culture references to the difficulty of finding the clitoris. How hard to find is front and center. Ha ha ha. But behind the joking is kind of a serious issue. Medical science has been something of a laggard in studying anything really to do with the clitoris. It wasn't until 1998 that Helen O'Connell published the first detailed anatomical dissections of the clitoris, which revealed that the glands visible from the outside is actually just the tip of the iceberg. And this was important, as it's entirely impossible for surgeons helping victims of genital mutilation to have a hope of helping their patients if they don't even know what the anatomy is that they're operating on. And how are we ever to fully understand the female orgasm if we don't understand the anatomy that's involved in it? It turns out that the clitoris actually has two sets of processes that extend down and around the outside of the urethra and vagina. And these are termed the crust and bulb. Now in this image of a dissected clitoris, you can see the crust and bulb have been exposed and labeled extending down and lateral from the glands. And then in this image, you can see a lateral view. You can see there's a plastic tube that's been run through the urethra to show you where that is. And you can see how large the body of the clitoris really is. Now in this image, you can see the blood flow to the clitoris is highlighted in bright white in this MRI scan. It's bright white because it has so much more blood flow than the other areas of tissue surrounding it. And then in this diagram, you can see the labeled areas of anatomy that are reflected in the previous MRI scan. And you can see that the clitoris actually reaches down and it surrounds the entire urethra and vagina. So why did it take until the late 90s for us to have this kind of detailed knowledge? Was it just ignorance? Were we just ignoring the fact that there was a clitoris? Well, it actually turns out that there was a certain level of active suppression. And obviously you can guess this came from patriarchy, motivated control, and all of the negatives that go along with that. And we have evidence of this. If you take a look at old anatomy textbooks, so here's an image from the Gray's Anatomy textbook, which is a standard medical textbook from 1901. And you can see in this drawing of the female pelvis, the clitoris is clearly labeled. By contrast, if we look at the similar image from the 1948 edition of the same textbook, you can see that the, the clitoris has been removed. So apparently women in the early 1900s had clitori and then by 1948, no more. But I guess it's a good thing that at long last, this oversight is being corrected, better late than never. And in that effort, I'd like to share with you a recent neuroscience paper, lead authored by Andrea Noke, in which researchers tried to see where in the brain is the clitoris represented. And what they found was pretty interesting. Just as there's a large amount of variability in female genital anatomy, there's also a large amount of variability in female genital representation in the brain. Hi there, I'm Adam Dede, and welcome to a Neuroscience Journal Club, where I bring you a weekly discussion of a recently published article from the world of neuroscience. If you're liking the content, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. So the question that Nope and her colleagues were interested in answering was where and how is the clitoris represented in the brain? Now this might seem like a fairly simple and straightforward question, but it's actually kind of tricky because Previous studies have not been able to stimulate the clitoris in a way that is specific, naturalistic, and non-arousing, which is important because if you want to know exactly how the clitoris is represented, you don't want to have any accidental stimulation of other parts of the body. You don't want to have arousal coming in as an additional, uh, as an additional aspect of the activation that you're looking at. So previous studies have used partner or self-stimulation of the clitoris while patients have been scanned in an MRI scanner. But obviously, that's going to involve touching of other surrounding areas of the body and potentially be pretty arousing. One study used gentle electrical stimulation, but that's not going to be very naturalistic. So with these challenges, the question has remained largely open. Now, 15 years ago, a study was done in men where their penises were gently stroked with a toothbrush while they were having their brain scanned. And this allowed people to map out the representation of the penis in the brain. But that was 15 years ago, and the question has not been answered for how the clitoris is represented. To address this issue, Nope and her colleagues developed this nifty stimulation device. The rubber membrane in the middle can be made to move through the delivery of air via that rubber tube that's connected to it. This device is then mounted onto tight-fitting disposable underwear that the participants wear, and the participants place the device so that it's situated directly above their clitori themselves. And then MRI scans are taken while the participants are receiving this clitoral stimulation. 
Interestingly, the brain areas that responded to the clitoris stimulation were bilateral and variable between different participants. So in this image, you can see the locations of clitoral representation in the brains of different individuals. The colors represent where the activation is in the central sulcus, shown in red, on top of the gyrus of the somatosensory cortex, shown in blue, or in the paracingulate sulcus, which is posterior to the central sulcus. As a control, the researchers also used the same stimulation device and same stimulation protocol to stimulate the right hand of their participants. And unsurprisingly, they found that this was represented on the left side of the brain only rather than bilaterally and further down on the lateral surface of the somatosensory cortex. And in this image, you can see that there was quite a bit of variability for right hand representation, just as there had been for clitoral representation. Next, the researchers wanted to know if the representation of the clitoris could change as a function of life experience. So they collected detailed sexual histories from all of their participants, and what they found was that the frequency of sexual intercourse over the course of the previous 12 months was well correlated with the thickness of the brain in the area that represented the clitoris. Basically, the interpretation here is that the more stimulus the clitoris receives, the more the brain will build up cortex to represent it. Of course, an alternate hypothesis is that women who happen to have a built-up representation of their clitoris in their brain are going to go and seek out more sex. Obviously, the direction of this causal arrow, brain leading to behavior or behavior leading to brain, can't really be teased apart from these data, but maybe future research will get into it. So more seriously, though, this study represents an important step in helping to treat victims of sexual trauma. By establishing a normative baseline for how the clitoris is represented in the brain, it may become more possible to understand how brain representations of sexual organs change as a result of sexual trauma. And that may, in turn, lead to better treatment. Now, of course, the fact that such a basic step in understanding is only just now being done speaks to a general problem, that medical science tends to ignore women's health and particularly women's sexual health. But hopefully this is just the first study in a long line of many. Anyway, that's it. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, see you next week. And if you've been liking the content, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, and if you're really enjoying the, the content I'm putting out, I'd really appreciate your support on Patreon. The link is down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.